Hi everyone, I'm Alex Hamer, a technical artist intern at SideFX. This video is a continuation of our video series on using editor utility widgets with the Houdini Public API. In this video we'll talk about using PDG top networks with the Houdini Public API as well as some useful functions and snippets. I'm going to be assuming again that you have a basic understanding of top nets and the abilities associated with them. If you're unaware, there are a lot of tutorials from SideFX and third parties to help you get started. They are very easy to learn and super powerful. So when we have a HDA which contains a top net, to use it we need a PDG asset link. Fortunately, one is created for us automatically when we instantiate. If you've used a details panel with top nets before, you should recognize this menu. Now with editor utility widgets, we don't get as much information as this window gives us such as which items are waiting, cooking, cooked, or failed, but we can still run nearly all of the same functions. As we mentioned in an earlier video, we can bind some PDG-related delegates when we instantiate. Firstly is on post PDG top network cook, which will broadcast after we cook a top network. But keep in mind, this can broadcast even if the work item results are not loaded yet. Also, on post PDG bake, which broadcasts after baking PDG outputs. Working with PDG networks in the public API is fairly simple. We have the normal function controls as in Houdini, so dirty and cook. Dirty takes the place of cancel in this instance. But not only do we get functions for cooking a network or multiple networks, we also get functions for cooking specific nodes. So let's go through them. For cooking, we can of course cook our network, but we can also cook a specific node if we need, which allows us to recook a specific node, which is helpful. You'll of course need to know the network and node relative path, and make sure these are both filled so that the function operates correctly. For dirtying, we have a handy function to dirty all of the current networks we have, and you don't need to have more than one top network for this to work, of course. And similar to the cook nodes, we can also dirty a specific node and we can also dirty a specific network, if we have multiple. Whilst these functions are very useful, you can also just assign a trigger button to the buttons in our HDA, and call these traditionally with a trigger button parameter, which also works. Be aware though that some things like generate static won't function. In terms of baking, you have a whole range of functions for baking to a blueprint or an actor, as well as auto baking toggles. This is a crazy level of control and allows for extreme automation of tasks. That's a quick overview of PDG controls. There's a ton of documentation on the SideFX website for the functions and many examples of usage online. But if you know the basics of PDG top nets, then it will not take long for you to adapt to utilizing this method of use. Next, let's move on to some other examples of code snippets which are useful. So what if we have a particularly heavy HDA and we don't want auto cooking enabled every time we change a parameter? Well, we'll need to create a new button and a function for processing all of the updated parameters. While there is a function for processing the HDA, which is essentially an asynchronous version of instantiating, You'll have to create a map for all of the parameters, and this requires its own setup. But for simple recooking, we'll call recook to make sure this updates when the user wants. On a similar wavelength, what if we make a change to the HDA and don't want to have to remake our HDA in the scene? Well, helpfully, we can call rebuild, which will mark the HDA as needing to be rebuilt, and Houdini Engine will rebuild it for us asynchronously. There are also some useful examples in the Houdini Engine plugin folder, also specifically for editor utility widgets, which gives you some useful code snippets which I have shown in this video series, as well as some more advanced ones. I hope that this video series has helped you gain an understanding of the usefulness of using editor utility widgets with the Houdini Engine public API. I'm currently working on a couple of examples at my time here at SideFX, so hopefully those can be released soon and I can show you a production-ready version of an editor utility widget. 
keeping in mind, obviously, that there's still some bugs. To make a clear message, this isn't necessarily a better method than using the details panel, as the details panel has a lot more information and detailed layouts about all of the controls available to you. Editor utility widgets come in handy for creating custom UI specific around a tool, giving your artist only the information that they actually need. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to check out some of the other Pegasus content coming out soon, as well as the other videos from Pegasus on the SideFX website. Again, thanks for watching.